Hello everyone, this is uh, an encoder box that sends out a PWM and it's by Red Lion and it's not working so today well, let's fix it. So here I have a shaft encoder by Red Lion and what happens is as the shaft spins it outputs a square wave on one of these pins. So there are a couple screws of two sides of this and there's this little black thing here. So what you want to do is you take off those screws and this will come out like this. Inside there is a shaft that spins and it has this little plastic film with uh, some black lines on it that makes the PWM based on the number of rotations it can actually determine how many uh, what the RPM is basically <clears throat> the circuitry is, is uh, qu quite basic here so this is the circuitry the, the red wire is positive the green one is negative and then your signal wire is the yellow one now when I first connected it um, there's this uh, diode here and this diode is used for reverse protection because if you flip your negative and positive it will just short through um, this diode and the, the diode will heat up and it will protect your, your circuits. So if you're reading um, high amps that are being drawn, you probably have the wrong polarity. Now, uh, when it goes through here, positive VCC goes to this right leg right here. This is positive VCC and this is the positive of the LED. You have LED that turns on and then you have a photo transistor right here that uh, uh, detects if there's light. The most common cause of the issues with this board is this LED is blown. You can test the LED by making your voltage power supply at 1.5 volts and just test to see if, uh, if you have uh, any light here. Then it goes into this MOSFET here and this MOSFET is um, normally broken as well. So you probably have to replace these two components here. You can determine if this MOSFET is bad by using your multimeter put it into diode mode and you can test this MOSFET by putting the this is the gate drain and source so put the positive to the drain and negative down and it should read like this it should be it should be open if you reverse the leads you should get continuity and if you're reading continuity this way then replace this MOSFET. There's other B, uh, this is an N channel MOSFET, it's 14 amps N channel uh, there and just make sure that the the gate is plus or minus 20 volts. This little guy right here is uh, other end, end channel, you could just put a little end channel MOSFET or a, a, a transistor here. We have a couple resistors. We have a 56 ohm resistor and right here should be a 10k ohm resistor. Now, now down here we have other transistor and we also have uh, 1.5k ohm uh, resistor but usually those are fine and on the back 
we actually have a 5 volt regulator and this is all ground plane so if you measure voltage from the ground plane to the third pin here you uh, and and it's on it should be 5 volts so that's the internal here's the schematic here's the internal schematic there are two types there are encoders with one LED or two LEDs if you have two LEDs then you can have two data lines ours just has one LED so it only has data line A and this is the schematic you can see VCC connects right to the positive of the LED and then we have a photo transistor the, the this guy's a photo transistor here. It goes through 1.5 K ohm resistor. This is the bottom. You have a 1.5 K ohm resistor. And normally what blows is this LED right here. And then there's pulse sampling amplifier. There's a end channel MOSFET that blows in series with this LED and you have to replace these two. To replace this guy what, ha what I usually do is I just use a soldering iron heat up the two pins at the bottom and uh, first pry this out and then you can heat up the pins and then pull that out. So replace this. To replace this one you need to have a heat gun there's a pad on the bottom so you can just shoot your heat gun at the bottom heat up the pad and then you can remove this guy and then you may want to put a little bit of liquid solder for your new end channel MOSFET and that's about it for the two parts and then what you want to do is you want to test so to test that everything is working you have to use an oscilloscope I just put in one screw right here. Again, you won't be able to see any light because I, I use an infrared LED, so you can't see that unless you use your camera. And then I connect my positive VCC, and then this pin right here is the the uh, yellow, yellow wire that should give you a square wave out. As you turn this, you should see the square wave. If you don't, then you know that something is wrong. So I have many of these to, to fix and that's the basic idea. So here you can see the square wave you should get uh, a square wave when you're uh, turning it. This is uh, the gate drain and source. So I'm measuring 490 and then if you flip around it should measure an open circuit right here but it doesn't so I'll be taking this guy off this heating up with my heat gun at uh, about you can put it a little bit more hotter temperature 400 degrees Celsius at, on the bottom and it comes off nicely just apply your liquid solder and then put on the new MOSFET and channel MOSFET and then just heat it up on the top about 300 degrees and that should be good there just reconfirm with your multimeter that one side is open uh, when the positive is on the bottom you're going to have continuity so that's good and then we also have to check the LED you can um, so to remove the LED I'm just using my hot siren iron uh, from the bottom and also the top and just pull that out you, I'm using infrared LEDs because they use a little bit more voltage so hopefully it'll last longer and they won't uh, die. They use about 1.5 volts and about uh, 30 milliamps. So they should be more hardy than the other LEDs that were installed. Just heating it up and then I can slide it through the bottom. You can test the LEDs as well. The, usually when you get new LEDs, the shorter the leg is negative. Then using my tweezers, I'm just bending over the leg so that I can insert it so that it's sh shooting towards the photo transistor and putting a little bit of glue to hold it in place then after that we can just put it in, in and we can test it so I'll, I'll apply the power to this and then test that so 
looking on your oscilloscope, you should see a square wave. So the correct pin out, the little grooves at the top here, the red wire is this. So this is positive VCC. Then it goes ground. And the third one to the right here is the data pin. Just a note about this cable that I was uh, given. The wiring is not correct for for these guys here. So the only two wires that are actually connected with this cable is um, the red and black wire, but they are wrong for polarity. If you're going to use this cable, the black one would be VCC and the red one would be uh, ground. And none of these data lines are connected. Okay, So you'd have to have a different cable to work with these because there's actually only three wires. Um, you have VCC, red, and then ground is green and then yellow is your data line and it uses again the top three pins right right here you guys can consider subscribing uh, if you're interested in repairing electronics and you want to learn new tips and tricks on how to fix things i'll see you guys in the next video